Hi, my name is Dan Matthews and I'm a Masters of Education Technology candidate for Boise State University. I first remember my, my first experience with technology. I think I was about six years old and I woke up and Santa Claus had brought us a Nintendo. And I was so excited to get that Nintendo and, and to get to play the games on it. And even though it had the most simple graphics, to me, when I was that age, I, I had I was in high cotton, I'll tell you what. And later on, um, anytime I got anything that was technology related, I always opened it up because I wanted to see how it would work. And I can't tell you how many electronic devices I broke because I was opening them to see how they worked and then couldn't get them back together. Um, I went to college and got a degree in kinesiology. And after I, I got out of college, I went into sales for a couple of years um, before um, going back into education. I really wanted to do something I was excited about. So um, despite having absolutely no education, I stepped into my first classroom, a classroom full of freshmen, geometry class, and had no idea what I was doing, no formal teacher training. Um, but really what got me through it was a couple months into it, I got a smart board and the kids were so much more engaged once they saw that smart board and they got really excited about it and they're like, Coach Matthews, you know how to work this smart board so well. Um, it, it really kind of got me through that first year of teaching and, and kind of kept me going. Um, I always knew I wanted to get some teacher training and some, some education. And so when one of my colleagues told me about the Masters of Education program uh, that he took at Boise State, um, I, I, I really knew that it would be a good fit for me. And I've, I have loved um, everything about the program. I have learned so much, not just about technology, but also about teaching and about education. Um, uh, the purpose of this video is for my portfolio um, at the end of my master's program. I am going to tell you guys a little bit about some of the things that I learned, um, some of the ways that I grew, and what were some of my best experiences being in the program at Boise State. In EdTech 502, we learned how to design web pages, which for me was a real challenge because I had never done any kind of HTML coding before. And the class took significantly more than the number of hours that, that were typically recommended for a three credit course, um, mainly because of the learning curve and because of all the challenges that I, that I had um, getting it to upload to the website. And then once I'd get it to upload, it wouldn't look right, so I'd have to go back and redo my code. Um, but as a result, I felt like I, I had more of a rewarding experience in this class because I was able to overcome those challenges. Um, you can see on the website, this is my home page for EdTech 502, the projects got, they started out very simple with a very, very basic color scheme, very basic boxes. And then as we went through, they got more and more, um, they got more and more involved and the, we got more color schemes and we're able to, to click here and you can jump down the page and uh, we learned more and more as we went through the process. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the most rewarding things um, as you go through uh, was this mobile learning page where we were actually able to take the students on a field trip to, the, to this ex exhibition um, which is in Atlanta and they were able to do the the mobile learning activity um, as a result of the the mobile learning part that I did um, you know created the home page for for my EdTech program um, I, one of the things that I'm really proud of was this virtual field trip where instead of taking a virtual field trip to a place um, I did a virtual field trip through the human body and uh, embedded video um, documentaries uh, included ans answer keys and and um, for questions that they were going to be asked on each page and we had the the list of links up along the top here um, just a, a great learning experience for me and a little bit later I'm going to talk about the web quest and how I've used this as one of my um, probably one of my favorite artifacts that I've done in the whole program thing I'd always wanted to be able to do with technology was to be able to edit videos and, and not just using Win, Mo, Windows Movie Maker which I never really thought was a great program. Um, I know it's gotten better uh, since the late 90s the last time I used it but 
um, I really wanted to be able to create videos that, that looked nice and you could add sound and incorporate video and images. Um, so when I purchased the Adobe Suite, I ended up spending a little extra and got the one that had Adobe Premiere Pro along with it. And I learned to use this program uh, kind of through the program and I, I really love the way that you can incorporate video clips and then you can you can take the video clip and you can transition and put in your own audio transition. Um, I use this all the time for football games. Um, we show clips to kind of try to get the the kids fired up before they start a game. And you know this has really been a, a, a kind of a steep learning curve for me because it took a lot to learn how to drag all the all the pieces in and uh, thankfully. They, Adobe had a lot of really good web web tutorials on there, um, but I, I learned a lot through doing this, and it really helped me grow and helped me be able to incorporate video in one of the things that I really love doing, which is which is coaching. Now, learning how to do video was not just something that I did um, because of this program or because of football or anything like that. I also got an opportunity to to get a little bit of work in it and do a little side job when I was when I was teaching. Um, originally I started as just a camera person uh, behind the lens um, and, and ultimately that turned into really piquing my interest in doing video and then the EdTech program just kind of provided the opportunity for me to move on from there and to, to kind of grow that and, and make it even bigger. Um, now let's take it to the classroom and look at some things that I learned in the classroom. where I really grew through the EdTech program was in learning about learning theory and in EdTech 504 we took um, learning theory and related it to technology. Um, I didn't have the benefit of going through a an education program because um, I was a lateral entry teacher so as a result I kinda came out with really a blank slate and I really did a lot of teaching the way I was taught and in this class um, I'd, I'd always had my thoughts on what I wanted to do and what I liked my classroom to look like, and it was always more interactive uh, than the way I had grown up, but I didn't really have a term to put with it. Um, so we wrote our first short paper, I wrote one on social activism, and it, it helped kind of introduce me to some key people like John Dewey and Vygotsky, and I was really able to learn some of the key principles and understand a lot more about the way people learn. Um, then the second one, I wrote my constructivist approach to technology paper, and in this paper, I really kind of put words to 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 the things that were already my thoughts. And I, I wrote my paper and got it got a, an excellent peer review. Um, and that was another thing. One of the big things that I learned through the program was from my peers and how many things that we can learn from the people who are around us um, just as much as we can learn from our instructors. Um, it made me realize, reflect on my own teaching in that, you know, really we are here and we're, we're all part of this together and in the classroom the students need to have that social interaction. They need, need to be able to have that ability to understand that they are in this together and I learned a lot about the reasons why kids would respond the way they would and why certain activities they really really um, they really did well with and then other activities they really struggled with. Um, this was a, a real learning and growing experience for me through the program. Before taking EdTech 506 I had told anyone who would ask me um, about my artistic skills that I am not an artist. I'd never really had any interest in it and um, as a result a lot of the images that I used for class weren't real weren't real good images to use in class. Um, through EdTech 506 um, we learned a lot of things about different different theories, um, universal design and using things that were simple um, concise images um, and type to typography uh, this picture says a lot about the type of tissue um, taking someone's arm and saying we have connective tissue in the center of it, muscle kind of holding it all together, 
and then epithelial tissue on the outside that's going to hold it, that's going to keep everything contained inside. Um, and we learned a lot about theories like white space and uh, what can be meant by the shape and the color and using text. Um, this image right here is a concept map that I created for a, a concept of types of tissue that the kids really struggled with. Um, remembering what were the types of connective tissue, what were the types of epithelial tissue, what were the types of muscle tissue. And this really just lays it out in, in a simple format. Um, typically what would have taken a couple of days to go through and for the kids to see where all these are located and then most of them would forget anyway. Now we can do in just a few minutes of them making a concept map. Um, another one, probably one of the ones that I'm the most proud of is this one with the phases of mitosis. Um, using the, the CARP, which is contrast, alignment, repetition, and proximity, where we can have I can have everything is lined up and we use white space uh, to create perceptual chunks so that students can can put together what each phase of the cell site of the the dividing of the nucleus cycle looks like along with the the name of it um, and then they use the arrows to kind of follow the pattern around um, you know EdTech 506 really taught me a lot about about what types of things are going to be appropriate to use with kids, um, you know, contrast and keeping good spacing. And it's something that I continue to use every day. And before I put any any kind of images up on the screen, I always make sure that they're following the, the key principles that we learned in that class. Now, there are a lot of overarching themes from the programs, uh, the different classes that we took in the EdTech program. Um, a lot of things that I, I can't really attest to just one program. Uh, things that improve my teaching, things that improve my coaching, things that improve the way I just generally do things in the classroom. Uh, one of those things were rubrics. Um, every course that we had, every assignment that we had, had a, had a rubric. So we knew exactly what we needed to do in order to make an A. Um, we even got an opportunity to create one of these when we did our, our web quest. Um, and rubrics are one of those things that I use all the time in class now. And I'll hand them out to the students and then they don't have any excuse. They can always say they knew exactly what they needed to do. And a lot of, a lot of my students really appreciate that I'm giving them rubrics. Um, another thing that we did were peer reviews when we would post something and our peers would comment on it. and, and you know, I found I learned as much from my peers as I learned from our from our teachers in the class. And a lot of times our peers have so many great things to say, and I figured the same must be true of the students. So I, I opened up some more collaborative opportunities. Um, I found this website called todaysmeet.com. Um, as a result of the searching, just having had all that great peer interaction in the classes, I decided it would be worth it to try to bring that into uh, my high school classrooms. And so I take kids to today's meet. Most of them can log into it from their phones, and they can pose questions on the site, and I can answer them, or I can put up questions, and, and they can answer them, and I find that they'll kind of bounce back and forth, um, and different people will have different answers or different thoughts on it. Um, another thing that I, that I benefited from was, was learning a lot about copyright and learning about having proper netiquette um, when in an online community but teaching my kids about creative common searches that there are great pictures and there are there are even music sounds and other media and things that you can use as long as you give the right person attribution you don't have to worry about violating copyright when you use these things um, and finally just the opportunity to do asynchronous learning and making sure that I always have um, materials available for kids tutorials video tutorials things like that available outside of class um, I'll frequently post onto my teacher website. I'll frequently post um, video links for things that students can go look at if they're struggling with a subject. Um, a lot of things from the Khan Academy and um, different sites like that that are extremely beneficial to the kids. I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. Thank you so much for considering me as a candidate for the Masters of Educational Technology program. And thank you so much 
for all that I have learned from my professors, from the faculty, and from the people who I've worked with going through this program. My teaching, my coaching will never be the same after going through the Boise State program. Thank you so much.